Hi! So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mateo Chavez Lewis, and welcome to the channel. If you've ever been to this channel before, you know that I do videos analyzing songs from popular musicals, and by popular composers. For example, I recently did a video ranking the best works of some little-known composer known as Stephen Sondheim. Maybe you've heard of him? You can check out that video, by the way, by clicking this bar right up here. But today I'm going to shed some light on some musical theater composers you might not have heard of yet. And so for each one of these composers, I'm going to talk a little bit about, like, you know, sharing their bio, and who they are what they do, and I'm gonna put a whole bunch of links in the description, so if any of these composers interest you and you want to find out more, you know where to find that information. It's in the description box right down there. Alright, let's dive right in. Top 5 composers you might not have heard of. Number 5. Jariah Kwame. Jariah Kwame is a pretty new face on the scene. In 2019, Taylor Louderman ran a contest for songwriters. Taylor Louderman, by the way, is most famous for originating the role of Regina George in Mean Girls. So she ran this competition called Write Out Loud, and Jariah submitted his song Little Miss Perfect and he won the competition. That is a fantastic song by the way, so if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. His song was so popular and it gained over 10 million views on YouTube, so he actually decided to write a whole musical about the character who he invented to sing this standalone song. So it was initially a standalone song, but then he wrote a whole musical around it, and the musical is called Little Miss Perfect, and there's a concept album on Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you listen to music, so you can go check that out. Number four, Grace McLean. Now, Grace is a performer. She appeared in Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. She also appeared in Alice by Heart, which is one of my favorite new musicals. But when she's not, you know, starring in huge Broadway off-Broadway shows, she's also a composer, and a pretty freaking good one, too. Check out these couple bars from her song, Underground, from her musical, In the Green. You might be just like me I do not fit anywhere up there I carry a memory It makes me hazardous, hideous, insidious But underground I'm at ease I can rest while I hide Underground no one sees The dark is as deep as it is wide so, if you were listening closely, you may have heard that there was a really weird dramatic key change in that section of music. That was a key change from B minor to B flat major. So we're going down a semitone and changing from minor to major. You know, sometimes we'll get a modulation from major to minor or vice versa. Sometimes we'll get a modulation up a semitone or up a whole tone. But very rarely will we get a modulation down a tone and even more rarely will we get those things at the same time. So she does this really original kind of never before seen very unique key change but she does it in a really intelligent way so it doesn't sound disjointed because this B minor chord and this B flat major chord share this note, this D. So that acts as kind of an anchor for the rest of the notes to revolve around. And it's really great from a storytelling perspective too because it communicates the darkness of this character. They have this kind of otherworldly quality about them. You're not quite sure what's going on in their head. You're not quite sure if they're okay. They seem a little bit unpredictable, a little bit scary. And I think that's exactly the vibe that she's trying to give you. And she, boy, does she do it well. So that's Grace McLean. Uh, in the green, by the way, the album for that is also available on Apple Music, Spotify, and everything. So make sure to check that out. The link is in the description. All right, on to number three. Number three, Neil Bartram and Brian Hill. Now, I'm kind of grouping these guys together because they really work as a group. Neil Bartram writes the music and the lyrics, and Brian Hill writes the book or the, the script. Right now, they are working on Disney's Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. So they're kind of a big deal. As soon as you're working for Disney, like, you've made it. But they've also written this really fantastic show called The Theory of Relativity. I had the privilege of being in this show in high school, and it is such a great show. It's about the way that we can all influence each other. Even total strangers have a really profound impact on us. And I think especially in COVID times, it's become even more relevant because, I don't know, I think some of us, myself included, are forgetting how much we need each other as human beings. And this show reminds me of that when I listen to it. They did a production as part of the Festival of New Musicals at Goodspeed Musicals, and the cast recording from that production is available, again, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. This show specifically is a really, really good fit for schools and colleges because everyone kind of has a feature, everyone kind of has a role, the casting is really open, kind of any gender, race can play any role, and in 2020 and 2021, Theory of Relativity was actually the most produced show by high schools in the entire catalog of Music Theatre International, which is pretty cool. Number two. 
Britta Johnson. I had the pleasure, a while ago, of seeing Britta Johnson's musical Life After when it played in Toronto. This musical is unbelievable. It changed my life. And since playing Toronto, the musical Life After has gone on to have a production at the Old Globe in San Diego, and in 2022 it's going to have a production in Chicago at the Goodman Theatre. So if you're in Chicago, you should definitely check that out. I promise you it will change your life. It is an incredible, extraordinary piece of work. And Britta Johnson's also Canadian, so like, Go Canada. Number one, Ryan Scott Oliver. Y'all, have you listened to 35 Millimeters? This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite albums. It's called 35 Millimeters, a musical exhibition, and each song is based on a photograph by photographer Matthew Murphy. Ryan Scott Oliver took these photos and wrote songs about them, expanded them, came up with stories based on each one, and put it into this like rock and roll song cycle that featured talent like Lindsay Mendez, J. Armstrong Johnson, and Alex Brightman, who would go on to be nominated for a Tony. <laughs> It's a beautiful, beautiful musical composition. It is so well executed. The songs have such a quirky feel to them, but they're so emotional still. Like his kind of idiosyncratic musical vocabulary and the weird syntax of his character's words and the, I mean, the English vocabulary that he uses is also kind of idiosyncratic. Like who uses these words in that order? It's, it's weird. Listen, like I, I could go on for hours about 35 millimeters and this this video is not going to be that, that long so <laughs> so instead I'm just going to put a link in the description you can all go listen to it and then maybe if there's enough interest I'll do an analysis of one of the songs or something so make sure to subscribe so you can see that when it comes out anyways there you have it those are my personal like top five favorite lesser known musical theater composers who are working in the states and globally right now I personally am from Canada and so I know that there's a lot of Canadian talent that is really really amazing happening right now but I also know that a lot of my viewer base is not from Canada so so if you are from Canada um, and you're interested in seeing a video about my top five Canadian musical theater composers, click that subscribe button. Why not? Let's hang out every Saturday. If you like this video, if you found it interesting, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and click on those links in the description. Go find these amazing artists. Listen to their music. It is so worth it. Oh, and before I forget, you can actually donate to my Patreon at the link in the description below, which gets you access to a bunch of like behind the scenes content and like rough drafts of new songs I'm working on and early access to all of my videos. And it also helps support the channel and helps me upgrade my equipment. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you next Saturday. See you in the next video. Cheers.